I'm going to follow instructions made by Martin Bohm, who's also a Microsoft employee. To find the instructions where he not only mentions how to go over a Polycom phone, which I'm going to show, he also shows how to do this on a Yalink phone and audio codes. So in Bing, I'm just going to search for Martin Bohm SIP Gateway is here. And there's the first link, SIP Gateway is here. And now you can scroll through if you kind of want to follow the, along with the instructions that I'm using. I am going to be using a Polycom, uh, a Poly VVX 501 in my examples. But again, you can see he has a Yalink and audio codes as well. One of the prerequisites is just to make sure that your tenant is enabled for SIP Gateway. So the way to do that is here in Teams Admin Center, click on Teams Devices. If you see this SIP Devices section, you're ready to go. So now let's move over to the phone and configure that, and then we'll come back to Teams Admin Center. At this point, I wanna make sure that I have the most recent firmware on here. And I need the, uh, the SIP firmware, the generic one. So the IP address of my phone is 192.168.1. That 144, and I got that off the phone itself. Uh, so I'm going to go to HTTPS 182.168.1.144. Uh, default password on these devices now that it's been reset is 456. So I'm going to submit that. Then go to Utilities Software Upgrade. I'm going to check for updates directly from Polycom Hosted Server. Got the list. So here's the list. I'm just going to go with the latest one. Let's go to latest and greatest and click Install. That's quite a jump from 5.6 to 6.4. So let's go ahead and do that. Except, I don't know if you heard that, that's the phone doing its little doo -doo -doo, uh, start. So I'm gonna let this marinate for a while and I'll be back once the phone has updated. Now that we have upgraded the firmware, let us reset the phone back to, to, to factory defaults. So I'm gonna browse to the web page on my phone and log in with my password. Then go to Utilities and Phone Backup and Restore. Then under Global Settings, Restore Phone to Factory Settings. I'm going to click Restore and say Yes. Now the phone is going through some song and dance. You heard the little warble. And it's going to do a factory reset. So I'll be back once the phone is set all the way back to factory defaults. All right, we're almost ready to configure the phone and get signed in. One thing we do need to do back in Teams Admin Center, and that is to enable the right to make calls using these SIP gateway phones. So to do that, we're gonna to go to voice, and then down to calling policies, which is right here. From calling policies, I'm gonna go ahead and edit the global policy. And you probably, I'm not a big fan of editing global policies, but regardless, I'm gonna do that. And we're going to go for SIP devices can be used for calls. I'm going to switch that from off to on and click save. Now I'm going to bounce over again to the web page for this phone and set up a provisioning server and sign in and see what happens. All right, let me now go to the web page on my phone. So in my case, that IP address is 192.168.1.180. And you can get this off the device if you hit the home button in the upper right, then settings, status, network, TCP IP parameters, and then it'll kick out the IP address. So let's go ahead and get signed in on this device. My password, there we go. So now we are going to set a new provisioning server, which means we're gonna point this phone to a, a web server at Microsoft. It'll download a new firmware, essentially, a, a Teams firmware for this phone, which will then let us sign in to Teams. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to settings and then provisioning server. From here, I'm gonna set it to HTTP. And then I have three options for the URL I want to use. There's one for uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, one for the Americas, and one for Australia and uh, Pacific nations. So I am going to go with the United States ones because that is me. I'm going to change the server to HTTP. So my server address is going to be this. We can see at the front there, there's NOAM for North America. I'm going to change boot server to static, which is going to be here change that to static. And then I am going to save my configuration changes. Yes. And you heard the little 
warble the device just rebooted so we're gonna let this thing reboot and come back and see what we got the phone reboots a few times and then asks me to sign in so i'm gonna click the sign in button in the lower left and see what happens next i see a screen that says sign in to a website and a pairing code so i'm gonna go to my desktop go to that website microsoft.com device login and type in that pairing code so let me show you how that looks. I'm going to go to microsoft.com slash device login as the phone told me. And now it'll ask for the code that the phone gave me. And if I got that right, it'll bring this up and I can sign in with my account. Are you trying to sign into the SIP gateway? I sure am. So let's click continue and then it tells me you have signed in. I can now close this window. So now let me turn my attention back to the phone, which should start an automatic sign in process after a brief pause. And success! I'm signed in, I can make phone calls, life's good, everything's uh, there. So follow Martin Bohm's blog article to go through all these steps. And if you think this is a lot of steps, you have a lot of phones to do, don't forget remote provisioning. All the vendors provide tools like that. They also have different ways that you can push images down to phones to automate some of this stuff. But if you're just getting started doing one or two phones, here you go.